after this uh, analyst at the FBI had a conversation with his own mother, and his mother expressed suspicions about his father having an affair, cheating uh, on her, uh, uh, having an affair with another woman. And so as a result of that, they looked into it, and the, the, this particular analyst admitted that he ran the queries because of this tip from his mother that his dad was having an affair. Was that analyst terminated? Uh, I'm not sure that I can recall the specific instance that you're talking about. One instance from 2022 in which two analysts conducted queries seeking information about a person who was a potential tenant of a rental property owned by one of the analysts, seeking information about two individuals that the analyst himself had met through an online dating service. Were the FBI employees who conducted those to illegal searches, were they terminated? 19,000 donors to a particular congressional campaign, 133 Americans participating in civil unrest and protests uh, in the summer of 2020, and um, Americans who were in the vicinity of the Capitol, uh, not necessarily inside the Capitol, but in the vicinity of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Quote, using only the name of a U.S. congressman. The FISA court disclosed two particularly egregious searches from 2022. In June of 2022, an analyst conducted four queries of 702 information using the last names of a U.S. senator and of a state senator without further limitation. On October 25th, 2020, a staff's operations specialist ran a query using the social security number of a state judge who had, quote, complained to FBI about alleged civil rights violations perpetrated by a municipal chief of police, close quote. Were the FBI employees who conducted those illegal searches terminated, or did they have their security clearances stripped? Yes or no? Again, I don't know that I can speak to specific instances, but what I can tell you, and I think this is important to this exchange, is that all of the instances you just listed off all involve conduct that occurred before the reforms that before we put in reform. place. Your, before the reforms you put in place, reforms, the text of which we don't even have access to. Reforms that you've put in place. I've been on this committee for 13 years. During the entirety of those 13 years, I've expressed concerns to FBI directors appointed by presidents of both political parties and three different presidential administrations. Every darn one of them has told me the same thing. Don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's never different. You haven't changed. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed to have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens, that they were fired or that they had their security clearance stripped. Now, in 2022, FBI and other agencies searched Americans' communications over 200,000 times, only 16 of which were evidence of a crime-only searches that returned information. Were the three related batch queries consisting of over, over 23,000 separate queries relating to the events of January 6th, were those evidence of a crime-only queries, yes or no? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer, what is, I can't, what, the answer is no. I, what I do I, know the answer. The answer what, is no. Uh, and again, they all predate the reforms that we've put in place, which, which before echo we, other reforms that ever, other FBI directors which, have told me about to, every darn year. If How I about may. 19,000 donors to a political campaign? The answer there is no. What about the query for a sitting member of Congress? The answer there is no. What about the query involving a U.S. senator, which for all we know could be any one of us? The answer is no. And so what, what does that tell me? Well, what I'm hearing and what these data points all point to is that a warrant requirement or prohibition relating to, quote unquote, evidence of a crime only queries would not have been uh, something that would have prevented any of the most egregious examples of the abuse that we've seen under Section 702. So the FBI is already required to obtain a court order in some circumstances before accessing the contents of Americans' communications in the context of 702. They're already required for that in some circumstances. Since 2018, how many times has that requirement been triggered according to government reporting? Do you know? Are you talking about the so-called F2? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, how many times has it been triggered? Yes. I think it. I think there have been two instances where I think is maybe the number. 100, 103. Yeah. 103 times yeah. it's been triggered. And out of those 103 identified times, uh, the FBI should have obtained a court order. How many times did the FBI actually obtain one? 
Do you know? But that, I think the answer is none. Zero. So you're telling me that the FBI has completely ignored the limited court order requirement that it's already subjected to. You have the audacity to come here, and you told us that getting, uh, adding a warrant requirement to 702, even for queries involving U.S. persons on U.S. soil, that that would amount to some sort of unilateral disarmament. That, you have a lot of gall, sir. This is disgraceful. The Fourth Amendment requires more than that, and you know it. I know every single time for centuries, even prior to the founding of this country, there were similar protections built into the laws of the United Kingdom before we became a country. Even then, the government was making the same darn argument you're making today, which is, it's too hard. This would make it hard for the government. It's why we have a constitution, sir, and you must comply with it. To have looked at it has found it to be constitutional. Well, and last point. How lucky for you, point. because no one has standing to do that. No one knows when they're being surveilled. Yeah, that, that is not an argument, last, sir. Uh, those are instances where the queries were run in order to get to a public official, a member of Congress, to warn them about foreign influences targeting yes, them. And a warrant would not have enabled that. We yeah. call those consent searches. And consent searches do not require a warrant, sir. And you know that. There is nothing that you have done that is not entirely within the FBI's control and supervision. You're asking me to believe something that is not believable because your, your agency has made it unbelievable. And I refuse to accept it.